Hi everybody, this is Laura and Arnie with Crazy Cool Cakes. We've made a wonderful tutorial for you all and it's perfect for the fall season. But first, we'd like to share a wonderful tutorial created by our friend Rosie from Rosie's Dessert Spot. She teaches us step by step how to make this beautiful pumpkin barrel cake. Be sure to check out her tutorial. You can find the link underneath our video. Let's make a beautiful pumpkin cake. I'm going to start by making the vines for our pumpkin and for this I'm simply going to roll out some dark brown gum paste into some long skinny worms. Make sure the ends are nice and pointy and cut off the end so that it's blunt. And then I'm going to insert toothpicks halfway into the blunt ends of the worm. To make them curly as you saw I just simply twist them around one of my pick tools. And make as many as you'd like and then you can lay them down to dry on top of some wavy foam. To make the stem, I'm going to use quite a bit of gum paste, about an entire fistful, and it's the same color as the vines. Don't worry about the cracks and wrinkles for this. Actually, the more cracks and wrinkles, the cooler it looks. I've rolled out my stem to about a foot long. To flatten the bottom, stand it up on your table and place it between your hands and twist back and forth as you press down. Flare out the bottom as much as possible and you can use your fingers if necessary. Now I'm going to texture the entire stem from top to bottom using the pointy end of my veining tool. This is actually a lot of fun. Remember you can always find the list to our favorite tools and materials we use in this tutorial in the description box underneath our video. Here I'm giving my stem even more texture by adding finer lines using my wheel tool. That looks so cool. Now let's give our stem a really cool shape. I like how it looks curly, but whatever you do will look awesome. Our stem needs a little help to stand up straight, so for this I'm going to insert a thick skewer about 3 inches into my stem and I'm trimming it so that only about 3 inches sticks out of the stem at the bottom. I'm going to let it dry on a cake dummy for about a day before I'm ready to add it to the cake. I'm figuring out the shape of my stem again. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. And these cosmetic sponges sure come in handy. Just stack them and place them wherever you need to to make sure your stem dries exactly the way you want it. Mm-hmm, perfect. I just love making leaves, it's so relaxing. To make these, I'll be using some beautiful fall colors. I rolled out my gum paste on one of my favorite leaf veining mats and I'm gonna use this really pretty leaf cutter to cut out several of these types of leaves. After I cut out each leaf, I place it on this thin foam pad and I use my ball tool to thin out the edges. I'll be placing all of my leaves on this wavy foam so they can dry in really pretty random shapes like this one made in a beautiful fall yellow. Here's another beautiful leaf using an awesome khaki yellow. Here I'm using one of my favorite silicone molds to vein my leaf. I want my leaves to look as different as possible. For this leaf I'll be using a smaller ball tool to thin out all the edges. Here's another pretty leaf shape in a beautiful khaki green. I love this leaf cutter and I love this color. If you're interested in what colors I use to make these beautiful shades, be sure to check out the info in the description box. This is seriously one of my favorite parts of all of our projects. I just love dusting color. It's so much fun, so relaxing, and it makes me feel like an artist. Okay, so here I'm using a beautiful burnt orange and I'm just shading all of the edges. I want the edges to be a little bit darker than the inside. And to shade some of the veins on the inside of the leaf, I use a much smaller brush. Beautiful. I made some yellow leaves just like my orange ones and to dust these, I've mixed two different shades of brown to achieve the color that I'm going for. Que bonito. Now this leaf is gonna look super cool. I've dusted the entire edge with the burnt orange and a little bit on the inside with the dark brown. I love it. For my next leaf, I'm gonna combine two different green colors to achieve the hue I'm going for. Aye, aye. <laughs> so I've shaded my leaf green on the inside and brown on the outside. Now here's a really cool way to dust your leaf. Make each half a different color. Here I've made one entire half green and the other the burnt orange. I'm going to dust this one in the same way, except I'm going to add just a touch of dark brown right in the center. How beautiful. Check out all these gorgeous leaves, huh? 
Don't get rid of your dust yet. Our stem is dry by now. It's been sitting here for a day. Dusting color on our stem will make it look a little more realistic and even more beautiful. So here I'm just taking my different shades of brown and green and just randomly shading different areas of it. Man, that looks so awesome. Well, that's it for the decorations. Now on to the cake. This pumpkin is basically a three layer cake. And this cake here that you see has already been dammed and filled. I've only torted and leveled the bottom and middle layer of cake. I wanted to keep the top layer nice and round for my carving purposes. I had this cake sitting in the freezer for about a half an hour. It helps to have the cake nice and hard when you're carving and also it helps make the dam really nice and solid so it's not moving around on you while you're carving. So as you saw, I've already rounded off the top of my cake and I've also tapered the very bottom of the cake and I'm also rounding off the sharp edges on the middle layer. Here I'm carving out the perfect size divot for our stem. Mm, perfect pumpkin shape. The bottom layer of my cake still has the parchment paper on it since I didn't know exactly what size cardboard cake board I was going to need so here I'm just tracing it and I'm going to cut it out. I've taped my cake board to a larger cake board just for icing purposes and now we're ready to crumb coat. We're going to give the entire cake a nice thin coat of our awesome soft buttercream. If you haven't yet, be sure to check out our perfect icing consistencies tutorial. Now we're going to give our cake a beautiful outer coat of our thick consistency buttercream. Be sure to follow the basic shape of the cake when adding a thick coat of icing. I always like to start off with a lot more icing than I know I'm going to need because that makes it a lot easier for me when I'm scraping the icing off. That helps create a much smoother surface. Look at that beautiful snow white buttercream. Here's another one of my favorite techniques. I just love scraping cakes. I don't know why, I just find it so, so calming and relaxing. I'm using just a regular bench scraper to help me smooth out all the sides and the top of my cake. The video is really sped up here, so if you think you're taking too long, don't worry, you're not. I usually take a very long time to ice my cakes. Now I'm using one of my favorite little scraping tools to eliminate the tiny little lines made by the large bench scraper. I love this little scraper because I can bend it to the shape of my cake. Now I'm just going to smooth out my entire cake with my Viva paper towel. Did you know the Viva paper towel has two sides? Make sure you're using the smoother side. This next technique is so much fun and this is what will actually make our cake look like a pumpkin. Rather than having carved the entire cake into the shape of an actual pumpkin, this is so much easier to just transfer these effects onto the icing. Here I'm using a modeling stick and the paper towel to create deep grooves into the icing. I'm going to start off by making the largest grooves on the outside of my cake and I'm going to divide the pumpkin into eight large sections this way. Create the grooves so that it goes all the way from the bottom of the cake all the way to the top. You want to avoid having super sharp edges, so to smooth them down, just place a paper towel on your cake and gently pat them down with your finger. Now I'm going to use an even smaller modeling stick to texturize the individual sections. I'm using the same technique and you can just get as creative as you'd like. The more lines you make, the more it'll look like a pumpkin. How cool is that? Okay, let's do this. Time for some elbow grease. <laughs> Well, that wasn't so bad. The easiest way to get my fondant to stick to my icing is by spraying water with my Flarisol bottle. Keep in mind my icing is rock hard as it's been in the fridge overnight. The icing has to be hard or else we'll ruin our beautiful icing job and our awesome pumpkin texture with the fondant. Cover your cake like you would any other cake. Immediately after covering your cake with fondant, start to bring out your grooves with your finger. Start with the largest grooves first by gently placing your finger in the groove and sliding it up and down. Once you've pressed down the fondant as much as you can within the deep grooves, 
You can go ahead and use your large modeling stick to push it down even further in the areas where your finger didn't fit. Here I'm feeling for all the small grooves with my finger first and then I'm going back in there with the smaller modeling stick to really bring the detail out. Most of the grooves can be very easily seen through the fondant so it's not that hard to tell where they are. Give it one last gentle smooth down with your hand. Mmm, Hershey's cocoa powder. This is what we're going to use to add some deep color to our pumpkin. Use a larger brush to shade the indentation at the top of the cake as well as the larger grooves on the side of your pumpkin. Pretty cool. Use a smaller brush to bring out the smaller grooves. So far so good. Now I'm going to add some beautiful shading to my pumpkin with a really nice terracotta colored petal dust. Remember you can find links to all of the tools and materials I use in this video in the description box underneath our tutorial. Next I'm going to dust on a beautiful super bright orange. This will really make our pumpkin pop. Oh yeah! Lastly, a super bright red. Just a touch of this here and there. Gorgeous. I'll be adding my pumpkin cake to this beautiful wood grain board. Be sure to check out my hubby's wood grain tutorial if you'd like to learn how to do this. Let's add our awesome stem. Just place it right in the center and push it down. I always love adding the final decorations to my cakes, it's so exciting. You can add these beautiful little vines anywhere you'd like around your stem, you really can't go wrong here. If you're going to be making this cake for a client, be sure to let them know there's toothpicks in each one of the vines. Is that looking awesome or what? Man, that is so cool. Time for our beautiful leaves. All we'll need to add on our leaves is just a little bit of royal icing in a piping bag with a very small tip. Just add a few little dots of icing wherever you see the leaf is going to be touching either the board or the cake. You can add leaves all around the base of the cake if you'd like, but I've chosen just to add leaves in the front. I think that looks really pretty. Here's a really quick, fun, and easy way to add a lot of cute little vines between your leaves. Take a piece of brown floral tape and twist it up. Then you can wind it around one of your modeling sticks and you have a perfect little vine. Feel free to add as many as you'd like. Make sure nobody eats them. What a beautiful pumpkin cake. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial everybody. We loved making it for you and we hope you enjoy making this cake too. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out our friend Rosie's pumpkin barrel cake tutorial. You can click on the screen now or you can find the link underneath our video. Hey guys, we'd like to invite you to check out some more of our tutorials. If you'd like to learn how to make these amazing Harry Potter cupcake toppers, click on the video on the left. If you'd like to learn how to make a super cool donut cake, click on the video on the right. We would also like to invite you to visit our online shops and it would be super awesome if you could follow us on our social media. You can find all the links underneath our video, but more importantly, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you everybody, bye bye. Take care everybody.